So I made a podcast episode about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, that's called The Man That Didn't Believe in Love. And in that episode, I, or in that recording, I read from a book, one of my favorite books called The Mastery of Love by Domingo Ruiz. I read one of my favorite portions, like an excerpt from that book, and I got a lot of positive feedback on that recording and people telling me that they would love to hear more of that style of recording. So in this episode, I'm going to read from probably one of my favorite books again, which is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And specifically, I'm going to read a portion from the chapter, The Joy of Being. I'm also going to read from another couple chapters from the book here and there just little notes that I've listed out because I think it's going to give a little bit more context and a little bit more value because I think this is such a crucial point that so many people miss um, especially on their self-development journey we're always thinking about what it is we need to do and if you're anything like me you have a goal or a vision in mind and it's so easy to get caught up in thinking always about what the next best thing we should do to help us move closer to where it is we want to go. We have a goal that's seemingly far away from us. And something that's helped me kind of recenter myself so I can realize that I have everything available to me now and there's beauty within this moment that's going to help me get closer to where it is I want to go. There's lessons in this moment that's going to help me get to where I want to go. Reading this chapter, especially like reading this book, but reading this chapter specifically, has really helped me like dial in, be present and understand that not only is there beauty and lessons to be learned in this moment alone, but you have everything available to you right now without searching outside of you that's going to help me move closer. You don't need to look externally. Looking externally for answers is great. And me even reading this book to you is like looking externally for answers because I'm reading a book. But it helps because it's like, You don't need to look externally. You don't even need to listen to this podcast. You don't need to listen to this recording. The answers are within you. If you spend time in silence, you're going to get the answers. But hopefully this, me reading this is going to inspire you to look within and realize that you have everything you need right now. You have all the answers to every single question that you have available to you right now in this moment. So yeah, I'm going to read a little bit from A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Hopefully this resonates with you and then I'll come back and have a little bit of commentary. A Zen master was walking in silence with one of his disciples along a mountain trail. When they came to an ancient cedar tree, they sat down under it for a simple meal of some rice and vegetables. After the meal, the disciple, a young monk, who had not yet found the key to the mastery of Zen, broke silence by asking the master, Master, how do I enter Zen? He was, of course, inquiring how to enter the state of consciousness, which is Zen. The master remained silent. Almost five minutes passed while the disciple anxiously waited for an answer. He was about to ask another question when the master suddenly spoke. Do you hear the sound of that mountain stream? The disciple had not been aware of any mountain stream. He had been too busy thinking about the meaning of Zen. Now, as he began to listen for the sound, his noisy mind subsided. At first he heard nothing, then his thinking gave way to his heightened alertness, and suddenly he did hear the hardly perceptible murmur of a small stream in the far distance. Yes, I can hear it now, he said. The master raised his finger, and with a look in his eyes that in some way was both fierce and gentle, said, Enter Zen from there. The disciple was stunned. It was his first Satori, a flash of enlightenment. He knew what Zen was without knowing what it was that he knew. They continued on their journey in silence. The disciple was amazed at the aliveness of the world around him. He experienced everything as if for the first time. Gradually, however, he started thinking again. The alert stillness became covered up again by the mental noise, and before long he had another question. Master, he said, I have been thinking. What would you have said if I hadn't been able to hear the mountain stream? 
The master stopped, looked at him, raised his finger, and said, Enter Zen from there. The ego asks, how can I make this situation fulfill my needs? Or how can I get to some other situation that will fulfill my needs? Presence is a state of inner spaciousness. When you are present, you ask, how do I respond to the needs of this situation, of this moment? In fact, you don't even need to ask the question. You are still alert, open to what is. You bring a new dimension into the situation, space. Then you look and you listen. Thus you become one with the situation, when instead of reacting against the situation, you merge with it. The solution arises out of the situation itself. Actually, it is not you, the person, who is looking and listening, but the alert stillness itself. Then if action is possible or necessary, you take action, or rather right action happens through you. Right action is action that is appropriate to the whole. When the action is accomplished, the alert, spacious stillness remains. The joy of being, which is the only true happiness, cannot come to you through any form, possession, achievement, person, or event. Through anything that happens, the joy cannot come to you, ever. It emanates from the formless dimension within you, from consciousness itself, and thus is one with who you are. Unhappiness or negativity is a disease on our planet. What pollution is on the outer level is negativity on the inner. It is everywhere, not just in places where people don't have enough, but even more so where they have more than enough. Is that surprising? No. The affluent world is even more deeply defined with form, more lost in content, more trapped in ego. People believe themselves to be dependent on what happens for their happiness that is to say, dependent on form. They don't realize that what happens is the most unstable thing in the universe. It changes constantly. They look upon the present moment as either marred by something that has happened and shouldn't have, or as deficient because of something that has not happened but should have. And so they miss the deeper perfection that is inherent in life itself, a perfection that is always already there that lies beyond what is happening or not happening, beyond form. Accept the present moment and find the perfection that is deeper than any form and untouched by time. Many poets and sages throughout the ages have observed that the true happiness, I call it the joy of being, is found in simple, seemingly unremarkable things. Most people in their restless search for something significant to happen to them continuously miss the insignificant, which may not be insignificant at all. The philosopher Nietzsche, in a rare moment of deep stillness, wrote, For happiness, how little suffices for happiness. The least thing precisely, the gentlest thing, the lightest thing. A lizard's rustling, a breath, a whisk, an eye glance. Little maketh up the best happiness. Be still. Why is the least thing that makes up the best happiness? Because true happiness is not caused by the thing or event, although this is how it first appears. The thing or event is so subtle, so unobtrusive, that it takes up only a small part of your consciousness, and the rest is inner space. Consciousness itself unobstructed by form. Inner space, consciousness, and who you are in your essence are one and the same. In other words, the form of little things leaves room for inner space. And it is from inner space, the unconditioned consciousness itself, that true happiness, the joy of being, emanates. To be aware of little, quiet things. However, you need to be quiet inside. A high degree of alertness is required. Be still. Look. Listen be present. The reason why I made this episode is to hopefully inspire or shed some light on the fact that presence and stillness and the awareness that you get from being present as you go about the day is where true happiness ultimately comes from. The awareness that in the quiet little things, the insignificant things that are all around you, the beauty that is all around us that may seemingly be so insignificant, like I said, you can 
enjoy your presence within those things and those things in and of itself just by being still. You can go for a walk in nature and see the most beautiful things and not be aware of it because you're just clouded by thought and in your own head. So I urge you to make two conscious choices. Number one is to be aware of all the beauty and seemingly insignificant things that are all around you. Whether that be a flower, a plant, a tree, the clouds in the sky, an old couple sitting together at a park, whatever it might be. What are the seemingly insignificant things that really have no association to you in your life? How can you be more aware of those things and more attuned to those things? Birds chirping or just stillness? Period. How can you be more aware of those things and the beauty that lies within those things and the happiness that arises within when you are aware of those things? So that's number one. And number two, what lessons and important insights, what answers are available to you when you are aware of those insignificant things, when you're quiet, when you're present? Notice that you are going to get more downloads, you could say, more intuition, more insights when you are aware, when you are present. And it comes from looking around in your environment and noticing things that you've never noticed before, rather than just going down the stream of thinking and always looking for the next best thing or the next best technique or answer, whatever it might be. The answers that you're looking for aren't necessarily out there. They're here in this moment and being present and being open to the beauty and seemingly insignificant things that are all around us all the time may have the answers or may stimulate the answers within you that help you move closer.